I just convince me yeah. that, okay, when I say many players could have died, I don't mean many players could have hit the ball and scored from there. Yes, many players can. It's the combination of everything. Okay. It's reading that Quanta is going to make the, the mistake. Yeah. It's getting to the ball, seeing where Kelleher is, and placing it there. Yeah. I don't think many players would have thought of that. And I think had that been Rashford, for example, or, or most players, like Rashford, a quicker player, I think Rashford would have taken the ball and run towards the goal before maybe shooting or trying to see if Van Dijk fouls him or whatever. I think, so, before I get abused by Bruno fans, is this is an amazing goal. I'm not taking anything away from the goal. I'm just saying, you, you think not many, you think that... Most people wouldn't have thought okay. of it. Okay, Roy Keane said the same on UK television after he said only Bruno could have scored. I am team Roy Keane on this occasion. Only, only Bruno could have scored. I was like, come on. Right. I saw Murillo almost scoring from his own half against Spurs right. on Sunday. The right? one where he looks up, controls seen, the ball I've seen and this shoots. guy in the third division in France scoring in a very similar way to Bruno in the third division in France from even deeper than Bruno. All I'm saying, Gab, is at that level, and now I'm not even talking third division in France, I'm talking Premier League players. They scan all the time. They are aware of everything. He knew exactly where Kelly was before even sprinting to get the ball. He knew that Kwanza was very likely because that's what Kwanza does a lot. He's a young player. He doesn't right now have the maturity in his game, the, the awareness, maybe even the quality to take that ball forward. So what does he do? His default mechanism is, I pass the ball to Virgil. And Virgil then can... can Virgil has more responsibility in his he game than Kwanza. He passed it to Virgil. He passed it 10 meters in front of him, yeah, which but, was the problem. No, but no, yeah. no. But if there's no options in front of him, he right. will always go there. Always. This is why he does. But the logical thing... Though would have been, and I almost feel like it's probably part of their build-up. Though, pass it back to Kelleher. Yeah, maybe, but, but then, but then you then you invite the United block to go another forty yeah, yards and up, and then you ping it and get Kelleher yeah, but it doesn't matter over so the top much. to Salah, you know, and you score. If you pass it to to Virgil, the the neither neither of the two blocks move. If you pass it to yeah, Kelleher, yeah, of course, of course, no, I, 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 I understand all yeah. of that. I just think that players of this quality, Bruno quality, and okay, maybe not. Defenders so much, but everybody in midfield, Casemiro would have scored it, Menu would have scored it, Garnacho would have scored it. I'm convinced that they would have tried the same thing. It was the obvious thing to do. I watched on television, as soon as Kwanza passed the ball, I said, Bruno is going to, I said to my son, Bruno is going to have the ball and he's going to shoot. All right. And that's exactly what he did. Okay. This is the dream goal. You know what? I guarantee you, I guarantee you that all those players dream of a goal like this, dream since, of an opportunity like this. Since everybody scans and knows where they are, um, Kelleher runs across. I'm assuming as he's going across, because he's looking at, at the ball and because he's at a full sprint, he can't know exactly whether he's inside the box or outside the box. Yes, yeah, I agree. Um, he does reach for the ball, which makes me think that he thinks he's inside the box. Yeah. I don't even know where he is, but just... I, I just thought it was also interesting. reflex. Maybe it's just reflex. It's, it's got to be reflex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got to be so much. Mm. But if he's outside the box and he touches it, he's also sent off. Unless it's a goal. Yeah, yeah. Which, you know, uh, so so it's, it was, I mean, I'm not blaming Keller no, in any no, way. No, 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 no. <laughs> that was a difficult position to be in. But for me, the game, I'm not just for me, but clearly the game's, the momentum switches then because after that, United have yeah, the crowd 15, get involved and great minutes, the crowd is on, and, and then Kobe comes up with another. And again, and this is another one. You saw, so that goal, uh, I, was, I was watching on TV. I was struck by it um, because... Yeah, he's got time to turn and everything, but it is a ridiculous finish. Some people thought it was almost as good as Kiko Makeda against, uh, against Villa yeah. back in the day. And I hope Kobe has a much better career. I mean, he's Kiko a better does. player than Makeda. No offense. Um, but, and it goes on the sideline, and then, then the camera pans to Klopp, who's absolutely furious on the sidelines. You've got Van Dyke and Robertson, kind of, they, they look like they're having words. I don't think to myself, okay, but. This isn't a mistake on the goal because it's a tremendous goal. And you can take issue with the defending on letting him turn, but it still has mm. got a ton yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah. But it was more that moment in the game where it felt as if the momentum had shifted. And Klopp was angry because Liverpool had allowed the momentum to shift. No, I think he was angry that... So at the start of the move, the, the Kobe goal... Maynou is on his own in the, in the, circle, the center circle, receiving the ball, turning, and Klopp and Van Dijk and Kwanza are too deep. Robertson is too deep. Somebody should have come out on Maynou to not allow him to turn. It was too easy. He was literally in acres of space on his own, got the ball, turned, now faced the Liverpool goal, 
and then there's another phase of play for him then to go and score, but that's why he should have never been allowed to turn. And at that level, this is a massive mistake. In a game like this, when United have scored, it's 1-1, you can't, you can't have taken those 10 yards back if you're Liverpool, if you're Virgil van Dijk. There was no threat in behind you and, and Manu was there on his own. And somebody, whether it was Endo, Virgil, Kwanzaa, Robertson, somebody should have picked somebody him up should have done and, should have, and should, have, should have pushed up to be behind him, not allowing to turn and force him to play either sideways or backwards. Um, all right, the goal that made it 2-1... Well, sorry, that was the goal yeah, that made 2-1. Yeah. The equalizing goal, um, the one Bisaka on Elliott tackle. It's funny because people keep saying, oh, Juan Bisaka, some of the best tackling statistics in, in the Premier League and stuff like that. And there's a school of thought that also says, Don't go to ground. This is, this is a terrible metric mm -hmm. by which to judge defenders, right? <laughs> they're, they're tackling because some of the best defenders in the world Never, never tackle yeah. or hardly ever do because if you do it means something's gone wrong and yeah, you're collective exactly. defending right yeah, exactly so he makes the wrong choice because Elliot's going across him I think Elliot is also very very clever because he knows that leg is going to come across yeah and he also knows that if he just nudges the ball forward there's a chance that he'll get the leg but he kind of protects it and keeps it on the other side of him yeah and at that point it's a stonewall power. Yeah. yeah, and you know, I feel a little bit for Elliot because I think he's been so good this season. Whether he was starting games or coming on as a sub, that on a game like this where Sobozla is maybe not his best, certainly not his best, in terms of he, he, he has a lot of activity, he runs a lot, he's, he's present everywhere on the pitch, but then he's... he's Last touch of finishing, he had a good chance where he blasted the ball over the top. He's got the one-on-one -on -one and nil-nil, by the way. Yeah. Great save by Onana, but still, that's on Sobos lie. And I feel that maybe, maybe Elliot deserves a little bit more. I mean, I'd, again... More minutes, you mean? Yeah, yeah, more game, because he's been so good for them. And he brings something different, especially in ball control, than Sobos lie, who's, yeah, who's he, good on the ball. But, you know, like, I don't know. I, I think I the difficulty the there... I mean, look, I, I think he will get more minutes because they've got so many fixtures between now and the end of the season. I mean, we'll see how it goes now in the Europa League yeah. and whatnot. Um, the difficulty there for me is if you want to put it, you're, you're not going to drop Sobosly, I, I think, because he's next level uh, in terms of coming up with those moments, especially yeah, yeah. with Jota out and some of the other absentees you have. McAllister, I think, has to play. I know oh, He's I, the best of the three. In but sense. I think we agree... McAllister in front of the back four, you don't get full McAllister. No. You can ask him to do that. And so that means playing Endo because you're not going to play Elliot in front of the back four. No. So then it becomes a question of, should Elliot be a bigger part of the forward rotation in the front three? And again, you get into an That's issue. Salah. because Salah's untouchable. Yeah. I, I would, Luis Diaz seems to have so much energy that he just keeps going all the time. And then you get into Darwin and then it becomes a very different game. That means you play Salah more central, I suppose, if you were to yeah, play. Yeah. So I think that's a difficult situation they're in. It's going to get more complicated. I think it's a good, it's a good problem to have. Yeah, of course, like to say. Of we're now with Jones back um, yeah, as well. Yeah. I'm a big Curtis Jones guy before his injury anyway. Um, I want to move it on though. You, we mentioned Endo there. This was a game also, and it kind of gets lost a little bit because of the way it ended, but a number of Liverpool players had poor games in this one. We've mentioned Endo. We've mentioned Sabaslai. Mohamed Salah isn't playing like Mohamed Salah. You know, is this is this a concern? Is this is, I'm not is this sure. something when that when your XG away or Trafford is almost four, I don't think there's I, no problem. I don't think that I, I I would not be concerned. And when again the game changes mostly on that Kwanzaa mistake, which is a which is a youth mistake. It's not. You know, he will next time. I think he will learn from it, and next time he would, it would be differently. You're right. He might pass to Kelleher or just try something long. Even if he loses the ball, it's okay. Um, so I'm not, sh I'm not sure. And Klopp didn't seem worried. Yeah, of course you drop two points because it is two points dropped, and now you don't have your own destiny in your own hands because it's Arsenal's turn now. If they win all their games, they're champions. Not you anymore, unless you outscore them, and then we go down to the goal difference. They they plus nine ahead of you. But you know I don't like gold. Exactly. So that's why I'm not going to go there. So you you could be disappointed by that, but I'm not sure 
And yeah, you could be disappointed by a few individual performance there and there, but always, you, you, are, you never have your 11 starters who all play at their best. This, this never happens. So um, it would always be like that. So I don't think Klopp would be worried. I don't think Liverpool should be worried anyway. Let's turn our attention to Eric Ten Hag. Um, ah, the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, okay. So I want to first get all the mitigating circumstances out of the way because this is somebody, he said so much crap to deal with from the change in ownership to injuries to this to that just just injuries just at the back no Varane no Lisandro Martinez yeah. no Luke Shaw no no Terrell Molassi assuming Terrell Molassi yeah. is still a he's footballer still, still, yeah. um, no uh, Johnny Evans no, right, no Lindelof kind of scraping the bottom but who who Lin yeah no Lindelof too right yeah so he's got to play Harry Maguire who again younger listeners who might have forgotten this this is the guy who, until deadline day, Manchester United tried every which way to get rid of, yeah. right? Eric Ten Hag had to show up to training, whether it was his decision, whether it was the club's decision, and say, and look at Harry Maguire and say, you're not in my plans. I don't want you here. Go away. Go to West Ham, right? Yeah. And then it doesn't happen. He reintegrates him. I think Maguire's done his part. You know, he's been the terrible player that people describe him as. He's also not the most expensive uh, defender in the history of the Premier League. So this is a lot to deal with, yeah. right? I mean, defense is still the kind of the, the base of your team, whichever way you want to look at it. And you can say he's been gifted Kobe Manu. He's been fantastic, still 18. Um, so I give him, I, I, I think there's a lot of mitigating circumstances yeah, there. Sure. A lot of mitigating circumstances and the absolute stupidity of going into the season with a 20-year-old center forward who's just arrived and Anthony freaking Martial as your yep. backup. Mitigating circumstances, uh, Mason Greenwood, Rashford. Okay. All that out of the way. I don't know if he's good enough to be United's manager next season. That's a decision Ratcliffe are gonna is, is, is gonna make together with the together with the Glazers. Because lest we forget, Ratcliffe runs the football side, but the Glazers control the purse strings, and it costs money to move yep. players on. Yeah. And as I said earlier, the players are still following him. They're still resilient. They still seem to, at least when they're on the pitch, believe in him. And that is a credit to Ten Hag. His communication, however. If I were a United fan, I couldn't deal with somebody I coming I don't think out they can deal. <laughs> saying some, something like, I don't know if like, you know, being positive and upbeat doesn't mean that you have to turn into Pinocchio. So when you say something like, well, we dropped, oh, I'm disappointed because in this week we dropped seven points from winning positions. Uh, but you can clearly see we're a young team. You can clearly see how we're getting better. So the seven points you dropped from winning positions, obviously they were winning this game, the the, the turnaround, Chelsea's Chelsea, turnaround on Thursday night. And against Brentford. And the Brentford game, where they got completely battered by a team that's, what, two points above the relegation zone? Yeah. So, I'm sorry, you just stop it at, we're disappointed that we dropped points. Don't talk about how your team is playing better, because guess what? People are watching these games. But that's but I've, I've said to you before, you guys, every this. time he talks, he thinks that he needs to convinced Radcliffe and Brailsford and Jean-Claude Blanc, Omar Berada, whoever he wants to convince that he's still the guy for the job. So every time he speaks, he try, he talks about process. Remember we talked about it on Thursday. Even that line was ridiculous. He talks about those points drop. He talks how great they are. He talks, remember after the Fulham game, oh, our XG was higher than them. We should not have... When, yeah. when Funny enough, he doesn't bring up XG in this exactly. game when you gave up 3.59. Yeah, exactly. It's just, that's what he does. And... Okay, maybe but he's not helping. Somebody should advise him. Somebody should advise him. Yo, why don't you he get your friends at pressure. SCG to tell you? In fact, the he founder of SCG, pressure. the guy Kroos, right? Yeah, he's got time on his hands now. Plenty that he's of being time. Maybe Plenty. he can give you. Maybe he can ring you up and say, Eric, cut it out with this, right? No, just know. because it, it, it doesn't make him appear credible. I and and I think it's a shame because look, he's not the perfect manager. He may not be right for United, but he's done some good things. I think. Yeah. In difficult situations. Kamwala as well. Oh, uh, my boy. Well, uh, my boy, Paris born. I mean, okay. I thought he, he's from Congo. Yeah, he arrived in Paris when he was two years old. Okay, so he's not Paris born no, okay. he's, to start. He's Paris bred. He may be Paris bred. Bred, okay. Almost born and certainly bred. Amazing. 19 year old. Come on. And good story. He's had some serious injuries as well. Yeah, that he's come he back. He played for almost two years. When he, I mean, they, they paid a lot of money for him when he was really young because he was that good. Four million, I think. Four million when he was uh, a social. Uh, and now, hopefully, this will, you know, kickstart his professional career properly. I don't, 
There you go. So Congo born Willy Kambwala. Nah, Let's come clear on. This. He you moved at two him. years of age. Or I, three he could years be to Paris, Paris bred, but Paris is it nature bred. is it nurture? Come I think on. Nature Paris. says Congo. Nurture says <laughs> Paris. How's that, right? You can't claim everybody who's ever been it. to Paris. He's still one of mine. He's still one you of know, mine. Messi played in Paris too. He's what do you claim him? Yeah, but he didn't arrive in Paris when he was two. 